I didn't copy it in time, the game's over. Oh my gosh, all right, speed run. Hi friends, welcome back to the channel. I can't believe we're nearly at the end of this challenge. If you're new here, my name's Ash, I'm 27. I'm a cybersecurity enthusiast. And on this channel, we do all things Try Hack Me walkthrough, capture the flags, hacking guides, and we help each other on our way to cybersecurity professionalism. On today's video, we are we're up to day 23, defense in depth. For all other details like playlists, links and timestamps, please see the description. Otherwise, let's get into the video. Okay, so back on Try Hack Me, we've got task 28, day 23, defense in depth. Depth. As always, we have another awesome cybersecurity expert. Mark is on the job, so go see Mark's walkthrough. We have a view site, which we'll leave for just now. And uh, let's let's go over the information. All right, so we're practically one of the uh, SOC team members already. And we've learned about layering defenses, reducing attack surfaces. We even uh, wrote some secure code together. And we were able to respond and analyze different parts of the attack chain all essential in maintaining security posture. So this task will focus on what is formally known in security defense in depth, which is a more general and encompassing topic than the prior ones on their own. So the core mindset that defense in depth is founded on is the idea that there is no such thing as a silver bullet that would defeat all of an organization's security woes. No single defense mechanism can protect you from the bad world. So contrasting the past and the modern takes on defensive security. Castle walls are built to withstand sieges. And so we have this example of castle walls in medieval times stopping people from breaking it down. So they're well fortified. Even with that effort and diligence of, of maintaining maintaining and protecting a castle, the attackers will breach it. This is depending on the defender's response within the castle walls may mark the start of their end. So for a long time, even till today, organizations have looked at the security posture in the same way as medieval lords did. Strong focus on securing castle walls, the perimeter, so to speak. However, like medieval lords, after the perimeter is breached and depending on the organization's response, it's pretty much done for them. Two, fret not though. So our modern defense security teams are moving on from this mindset and are shifting to a more robust approach. Being mindful that the castle wall, while important, is not the only way to secure the organization. And looking at the reality that gunpowder will be discovered and a single point of failure consequently exploited. And having additional defense layers especially for the specific crown jewels that the bad guys may be targeting. These are some of the foundations that make up the modern security posture of defensive organizations. So next section is disrupting adversarial objectives. So we're trying to disrupt these attackers objectives, shifting the focus from just securing a perimeter to securing everything in the path that the adversary will take from the perimeter to the crown jewels. So we've got three varying levels of Defense. So first is focusing on that perimeter security. Then we've got the defense layers in place. So emphasis in solely on prevention. And then third, having a well-rounded defense layer in place. So the first level above can be thought of an organization that employs great perimeter defenses in place, such as web application firewalls, perimeter network firewalls, or even DMZs, is yet to implement internal network security and zero trust mechanisms are not yet in place. The second level can be thought of as an organization that employs the first level of defenses, but with more capable internal security measures, such as a network segmentation, zero trust principle implementation, least privileged access principle implementation, and even hardened hosts and networks. Having this level is actually really good for getting that preventative appliances may be used for detective capabilities too is a wasted opportunity. The third level can be thought out as using the advantages of the first and second levels to ramp up the detection and response capability of the organization via effective log collection and well-crafted analytics. This is where it goes full circle and not only expected to be good at layering preventative measures against attacks, but we should also be capable of responding to them if these defensive capabilities are 
bypassed. Let's have the following scenario as an example. Let's say an adversary was able to prevent our perimeter defenses via a successful spear fishing campaign. He would need to navigate a hardened environment full of tripwires and traps. He may be able to take over a specific user's account, but since we have implemented the, pr the principle of least privilege access property, he would be limited in terms of what he can work with. He may be able to move laterally to another user with better privileges via past the hash. Still, since we have good logging mechanisms and detection capabilities, our analytics would know exactly what past the hash looks like, so we would pick this activity up. Our cavalry will be alerted to respond and remediate this particular breach immediately. Remember that the main difference between levels two and three is the jiving together of these defense layers and detections and response mechanisms, allowing for a coherent and well-rounded security posture. A goal of layering defenses is to limit the room for mistakes that an adversary can have. In that sense, the bad guys need to get everything correct, but we only need them to make a mistake once. So to drive this point home, we'll explore what it looks like to be in the bad guy's shoes. We have prepared a little game for you. The game's objective is simple. Get your hands on the naughty or nice list in Sanders Vault. There will be three levels. Each one builds a defense layer on top of the previous one and will be a little bit harder. Remember you're playing as the bad yeti here so make sure you don't get caught click the view site at the top of the task to launch the static site all right so uh we'll get into this and we have a few game post game discussion we'll get into after let's go view site at the beginning and now we have all this information bouncing around ahead we should be able to get through this so mission elf possible you're presented with three different cases each harder than the previous one your objective is to get inside the perimeter locate the vault and get access to it without being caught so we have a list that we're going after we won't get there easily though so let's go and select start so in this level Sanders security is focused on the perimeter, given that we can expect that there may be complete trust within the compound. So it looks like we can click on two things. We have a guard. Hey there, what is your purpose of the visit? Okay, I see the game. I see what we're doing. Choose the best excuse for the guard to let you through. We want to visit the deer stable. Delivery for Santa's EA or meet my friends. I feel like delivery for Santa is going to be believable. He's going to ask for some authentication, right? I have a delivery for Santa's assistant. Okay, let me log your details quickly so we can go through. The guard did not seem to care about your excuse on the gate to proceed. So there was some social engineering and we can click on the gate and we're through. We're in, we're in the network compound. Click on a building to visit. Okay, so we've got Deer Stable. We have the assistant's office, Santa's office, and the workshop. We're going after his list, right? So it's probably going to be in his office. Alrighty, so we have a vault. So we found the vault. We can click on it, and we're looking to enter a password. Now we don't have the password. Take a step back in the network. And let's have a look around. I'm going to go over to the assistant's office. So we can click on the drawer. Let's have a look. Oh, well, hello. Santa's vault password. Well, that was easy. I guess the uh, the assistant would know the uh, the password, right? That's not what I copied. I like copy. All right, that worked. Now back at the vault, paste it in. Well, what is this? And our flag. So if we scroll down, we've got case one. What is the password for Santa's vault? So we can paste that in. And case one, what is the flag? We'll highlight that. And there is our flag for case one. All right, next case. So in this level, Santa's security is ramped up. It has additional defense layers in place but the main focus is prevention we might be able to bypass them if we're patient and we play our cards right Ooh, okay 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 so now we have our security guard um so i'm gonna do the same thing okay so i can still get in and if i repeat my steps now there's there's no drawer that we can open but we do notice something post notes we've got prepare milk and cookies so we we can't do anything here so what if we go over to the deer stable oh this is cute can't do anything there. So why don't we go over to the workshop? Workshop is closed at this moment. Someone noticed you snooping around but decided not to tell anyone about it. Oh no, because I had clicked everywhere. So if we go over to the Santa's office, we have a password hint, which is Santa's favorite. Please tell me it's just cookie. Can we use the password? No, they've changed the password. All right, so looking at case number two, what is Santa's favorite thing? The hell does, what the hell does he like? All right, looking up the answer format, there's 
14 characters. I don't know if this includes... Wait, he didn't use the same password as last time. Well, I'm actually a little bit stumped. Maybe I need to reset it so I go in the workshop and find some more things there without in the other places. Oh no, the guards have noticed that you've been gone a while. Okay, we're back. All right, let's repeat the process. So we'll go through, we'll go straight to the workshop. Yeah, it said the same thing. Oh man, I just realized it's milk and cookies. I am so slow. <laughs> Okay, there's our password for the vault. Paste that in and we've got the list. So that's, so we've got milk and cookies. Then we've got the password for Santa's vault. Then we've got the flag. Third and final case. In this level, Santa's security is at its maximum. Aside from the previous case's additional defense layers, Santa's defenses give feedback to the security team. Our room for mistake is very thin and we should play our cards right the first time. Guards here, we should probably go to the car, the guard. This has got me through twice. Why would this get me through again? I have a delivery of San Jose. Okay, let me log your details. You're given an EA pass. You can only go to the assistant's office, right? Oh, okay. Oh, now we have strikes. Each wrong interaction will subtract 50, uh, 45 seconds and give you one strike. We give you a pass. Oh, there it is. Okay, so we can only go here. So let's go here. No strikes. So we've got reminders. Buy my favorite. Bane of the pie. What the hell is that? I don't know what that is. Remind Santa to change his laptop password and make it harder to guess. Everyone knows his tendency to be lazy and repetitive. Okay, so we have his password from the last room. Um, we can also look in the drawer. Well done. You have collected the Santa pass. Hello. We can use that. Um, stack of papers. So this is the same vault password that we used earlier so we should be able to use that uh, but we just use the Santa ID to get in here now that we've got our pass. All right this is pretty easy. Do we need do we even need to worry about that? So we can use his password. He has changed his password. Oh bro was it the um was it the cookie the other thing? We go back in here this thing um one more wrong attempt will result in a strike. Oh damn. Oh we can go to the deer stable for some reason. There's like nothing to do here. Bro I'm running out of time. I'm just gonna use the vault password. I've Notice that you've been going a while. We've got a strike. Try again. Um, hello. Let's go in. Okay, thank you. Proceed through the gate. Go to the office. Oh, wait. Could we be able to do something with this? Wait, did I even try this? All right, so the old vault passwords don't work. Oh, okay, so there's a new password hint. Milk and cookies are so yesterday. That's why I thought it was this pie, but it's not. Then what the heck? Is it just all of them together? All right, all right if we go to our questions, we've got what is the assistant's favorite thing? So what is Santa's previous? password so that was uh, milk and cookies wait wasn't it wait now i'm tripping what was santa's previous password i thought it was milk and cookies okay i can interact with the assistant's laptop that actually wasn't working um uh vault all right so now we have a new vault password oh so vault two of two so is this the okay so this is the second part of the password old password hey always check the the bins so what was his previous password chocolate okay and the current password. So if we go here, watch out, the security has noticed your time is reduced each time it happens. Oh, I forgot to pick that up. They're gonna find me. So the hint was to change that to a two. <laughs> lazy, lazy, lazy. Uh, and okay, this is the first part of the new password for the vault. So now if we put these two together, we can get in. I didn't copy it in time, the game's over. Oh my gosh. All right, speed run. Pew, pew. Office, need this. And then we can go in here. And then we can go here. Copy, paste. The full flag uh full vault password is that all together and then what's the flag so that is like so cool. and now we have a code 2845 go to compound oh is this to get into the workshop ah cool uh so it's the code 2845 ding and we're in and we get our final flag well that was fun all right that was uh day 23 quite the uh little roller coaster at the end there where i thought i didn't know what i was doing but hey uh, that was, that was a fun little game i actually appreciate these last couple of days were just a little easier a little bit more fun day 24 is coming up next if you enjoyed day 23 please do leave a like thank you for watching and if you want to subscribe or ding the bell i'd appreciate that uh, i'm gonna let youtube recommend a video and uh the playlist for you to watch and i will see you in the next video last day coming up